In addition to standard button flash welders used for welding solid steel and non-ferrous rods, there is a need to weld stranded copper and aluminum conductors used in electrical applications from automotive electrical harnesses to power transmission cables. What was needed was a welder that could produce a weld that would maintain the strength and conductivity of the parent conductor, thereby eliminating the need to cut out the weld zone after the processing of the conductor was completed. Micro Products developed a series of welders that use a ceramic sleeve to confine the ends of the stranded conductors during welding. This contains the molten metal produced during the welding process, thereby creating a solid cross section where the two conductors are welded together and minimizing the weld burr to the size of the conductors being joined together. This prevents any single strands from breaking away during processing. The first of this series of welders is called a GP1. It was designed to weld stranded or bunched conductors from 20 gauge through 8 gauge copper. In this process, the ends of the conductor being welded are placed inside a ceramic sleeve while current is passed through the conductor. When the ends of the conductor become molten, the molten metal fills in the voids between the strands, while the ceramic sleeve confines the molten material to the size of the parent conductor, thereby minimizing excessive flashing or burr. We'll now demonstrate making a weld on the GP1. Turn the heat switch to the correct setting. Turn the space knob to open the head pieces to the correct open space. Adjust the tension knob to the correct setting. Ceramic sleeves are available for all common sizes of conductors. After sharing the ends of the conductors to be welded, select the correct sized sleeve to contain the conductor during welding. The sleeve should slide freely over the conductors. Insert one conductor into the end of the sleeve and clamp in place in the weld dies. The end of the conductor should extend halfway through the sleeve and the sleeve should be clamped centered between the weld dies. Insert the end of the other conductor into the end of the ceramic sleeve up against the end of the other conductor. Now put in place. Twist the ceramic sleeve to make sure it's free to turn and allow the conductors to slide freely during the weld process. Raise the flash shield before making the weld. To make the weld, twist the space cam forward. This motion automatically applies spring tension to the weld zone. As the space cam advances forward, it will contact the weld switch and current passes through the conductors. The resistance between the ends of the conductors inside the ceramic sleeve causes the ends of the conductors to heat up enough to melt. As spring tension forces the headpiece together, molten metal fills in the voids between the strands in the conductors. When the limit switch is activated by the advancing headpiece, the current is cut off and the weld zone between the conductors cools and solidifies, completing the weld cycle. At this point, the welded conductor and ceramic sleeve are unclamped and removed from the weld dies. The ceramic is then placed on a small steel anvil located on the front of the welder housing. A small hammer, provided with each machine, is used to fracture the disposable ceramic sleeve, exposing the completed weld. This conductor is now ready to be extruded or wound onto a coil or braided with other conductors in a spooling operation. The completed weld maintains the strength and conductivity of the parent materials. The welder you have just seen is called a GP1. A GP2, identical in appearance and function, is used to weld conductors from 12 gauge through 4 gauge.